Now that we can manipulate rational expressions, we move on to solving rational equations. Here, a rational equation is going to be an equation with one or more rational expressions in it. So we're looking at something like 4 over x squared minus 4 plus 1 equal to 1 over x minus 2. Okay, in general, I'm allowed to have our variable in both numerators and denominators. Now, at a first glance, it doesn't seem clear how I would get a handle on an equation like this. Okay, at this point, all we know how to solve are polynomial equations using the zero product rule with factoring. And that's going to be our strategy here. So I want to turn this rational equation into a polynomial equation. Another thing we have to worry about, when we go about finding our solutions through a polynomial equation, they might not work in the original equation. So if I solve an outcomes x equals 2, okay, from the polynomial equation, that's not going to work in the original equation here, because I'll wind up dividing by 0. Okay, dividing by 0 gives me undefined, so our equation won't make any sense. Now, we go through a checklist, and then we just work out with some examples. Our first step, we go through our equation term by term. We factor all the denominators. Okay, if we have terms that are not in fraction form, then the denominator is equal to 1. With those, we'll find the least common denominator of each term. I'm going to use that to clear all the fractions out. So, if we have an equation, okay, if I do equal operations to both sides of an equation, we don't change the equality. So if I multiply both sides by the least common denominator, the equation doesn't change. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying, take a look at your factor denominators, figure out what you need to multiply by to clear all the fractions. Once I've done the step three, We'll have a polynomial equation, so we'll need to clean things up, put zero on one side, everything else on the other. Then we just use our old methods to solve. Now, that'll give me a list of solutions. We take those solutions, put them back into the original rational equation. That checks our work, and if we divide by zero, we know that we can't use that solution, so we throw it away. So, Every solution that comes out of a rational equation needs to be checked. It's not optional. First example, start small, work our way up. So I have a half x plus a third equal to one fourth x. Now here, I want to make these look more like rational expressions. So I'll rewrite this as x over two plus a third equal to x over four. Now it's clear what each denominator is. We go to the checklist, first step, I'm going to factor each denominator. Second step, we find the least common denominator. Now, we have 2, 3, and 4. So, for the least common denominator, we use all factors that appear and with the highest exponent that appears. So, if I have 2, 3, and 2 squared, I'm going to want a 2 and a 3. Highest exponent for 2 is 2. So, our least common denominator is a 12. Now, note, that's a little bit overkill. You could just look at this equation. Okay, I know I want to clear out a 3 and a 4, so I need at least a 12. 12 is also going to take care of the 2. We move on to the next step. I want to multiply all terms in the equation by this 12, the least common denominator. Now, one thing you don't want to confuse this with is when we add or subtract rational expressions, Okay, I'm going to multiply by 1 over 1 in the form of whatever I need to get to the least common denominator. We're not doing that here. All I'm using the least common denominator for is to multiply through the entire expression. So we're not trying to get things over a common denominator. Now, we multiply each term by 12. What comes out? We're going to have 6x plus 4 equal to 3x. Now, I know I've done my work correctly if there are no fractions. So here I just have polynomial and x. We move things to opposite sides, so I isolate the x, and I get x equal to minus 4 over 3. Now, that's my only candidate for a solution. To check that it actually is a solution, we go back to the original equation. Now, the real issue is, if I use a solution while I divide by 0, the answer is going to be no. So 
all I'm checking now is that it actually matches up both sides of our equation. Okay, that's a genuine solution. So if we substitute into the original equation, okay, what do we have? We work out each side, we see we get a minus one third. The equation is true when we use x equal to minus four thirds, so that's our only solution. Next step, let's put x in the denominator. So I'll look at four over x plus three equal to four over x squared. Now, there's nothing to factor in the denominator, so that's step one. We note since I have a three, I can rewrite that as three over one if I'm not sure what the denominator is. We have x, one, and x squared. So the least common denominator is gonna be an x squared. Okay, again, you don't need to do this work. You could just look at your equation and ask, what do I need to clear out both an x and an x squared? I need an x squared to do that. We move on to the next step. We multiply each term in the equation by x squared. So it's gonna give me four x plus three x squared equals four. We have a polynomial equation. Check on my work is that there are no fractions. So good. I push everything to one side to get a zero on the other. Then we know we have a quadratic. So we can use factoring to solve this with the zero product rule. Now you use your favorite method to factor, say AC method or trial and error. What comes out is gonna be three X minus two times X plus two equal to zero. I set each term equal to zero and solve. So I'll have x equal to 2 thirds and minus 2 as potential solutions. I go back to check in the original equation. Okay, note the only way we'll get division by 0 is if we actually have x equal to 0, so it's not going to be a problem. When I check with x equal to minus 2, okay, we're going to have 1 on each side, so that works out. If I use x equal to 2 thirds, okay, now when I check, if I divide by 2 thirds, that's the same as multiplying by three halves. So when I check, this is gonna give me a three halves times four. Over here, I'm gonna have a four times a nine four. And then that checks out on each side. So both sides are gonna be equal to nine. To finish, let's consider an example where one of our solutions fails. We have four over x squared minus four plus one equal to one over x minus two. Now, we go through our checklist. For my first step, we factor each denominator. First term, x squared minus four, that's a difference of two squares. So that factors as x plus two, x minus two. Second term is one over one, so the denominator is one. Third term, we're gonna have x minus two. Now, for the least common denominator, we use all factors with their highest exponents. So here, I'm only gonna need x plus two, x minus two. And again, this is a little bit too much work. You could just look at the equation, ask yourself, what do I need to clear each denominator? So it'll be x plus two, x minus two, looking at the first term. Now, we apply x plus two, x minus two to each term. When I simplify, what comes out? I have four from the first term, x squared minus four from the second term, okay, so we're just multiplying by one, but then I'll just put it back into its original form. On the other side of the equals, I'm gonna have an x plus two. Now, this is a polynomial equation, so we push everything to one side, have a zero on the other, and then we see if we can factor. So I'm looking at x squared minus x minus two equals zero. This factors into x minus two times x plus one equals zero. So our solutions are gonna be x equal to two and x equal to minus one. Now, I don't wanna put a box around that just yet. I have to check each solution. Okay, we note here, numbers that could be problems would be a two or a minus two. So let's check. For x equal to minus one, okay, I have four over x squared minus four. X squared minus four is gonna to go to a minus three. We have a plus one, then I have a one over, okay, this is x minus two, so that becomes a minus three. On both sides, I have a one over a minus three, minus a third. So that solution checks out. So that's a genuine solution. When I go to x equal to two, okay, well, x squared minus four, when we put in a two is a zero, so I'm dividing by zero here. On the other side, 
x minus 2, when we put in 2 is 0, so we're dividing by 0 on the other side. Okay, we only need one term to go out to make it so that we don't have a solution. So 2, while it's a solution to the polynomial equation, it's not a solution to the original equation asked. That means our only solution is x equal to minus 1.